Today, we are not happy with the static AI images. We are going to animate them. What's more, we're going to animate them on a trained model. This means you can create your own AI actor or actress and make your own music videos or create your own TikTok influencer. <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves. This technology is very new and is evolving, so it might not look perfect yet, but we're right at the very start. It all started with this humble mid-journey render, and then I took it into something called Dreambooth and created a trained model, which means I can now create this character into any pose or position. And we don't want to stop there. We want to be able to animate this character, which means that the consistency as well as the poses are a lot more dynamic. To do this tutorial you need a driving video which is a video of you doing some disturbing actions. Also you will need a trained model and if you don't have a trained model you can just use the default stable diffusion or you can use my trained model which is available to download off my website here for free. You know I'm good to you. I also have an alternative method of animation and that will be in the next video but I want to show you both ways that are really cool. In this tutorial I'm going to be using Google Collab Pro and what this allows me to do is use a remote GPU that is far far superior than my rubbish computer. What's also great about this method I can connect from my iPad and start creating animations from absolutely anywhere. This tutorial is a available on the Prompt Muse website for absolutely free in written format as well. All my resources are free. What I do ask of you is if you could subscribe to this channel, like and ring the notification bell, that helps me out massively. The first method I'm going to show you is the image to image. We're going to be using the automatic 111 web UI and you've probably seen a lot of these tutorials online where they're doing it locally. I'm going to be doing it remotely. So let's get ready and do the first tutorial. When you open a Google Collab notebook, this is what it looks like. So the first thing you want to do is connect your Google Drive and log in. So we connect our Google Drive by running this first cell here. And when I say run, you are just clicking on this play button. And this will ask for you to connect to your Google Drive and just click run anyway and connect to Google Drive. It will then ask you to log in. This just connects your Google Drive into the file structure over here by clicking this file and you will be able to see your Google Drive. But once that's done, if I come up here to refresh and go to content, you will see something called G Drive. That's your Google Drive and my drive. And these are all my saved files on my Google Drive currently. I'm just going to close that for the time being. That has successfully connected because I have a green tick. Once you've got a green tick, you can move on to the next cell. Just click play and this will install automatic 111 repo. It's essentially just installing all the gubbins that you'll need to run this. It's not installing it on your PC. It's all remote. Once this session is over, your Google Drive will disconnect and all this information, it will all disappear. Once you've got your green tick, we're gonna move on to the requirements and again, just play that cell and that will take a few seconds. Now we move down to the model download load section and before we run this, we just want to make a couple of changes. If you have not created a model and you don't have a file to upload, do not worry. We can just run Stable Diffusion as normal. You can use 1.5 or if you press that, you get a drop down window. You can select the latest version, which is version 2.1. And with version 2.1, you have different resolutions. You've got 512 and 768. So whichever one suits your project the best. Now, if you do have a model or you're using my redhead.cktp file, you come down here where it says paths to CKPT. This is where we're going to load in our redhead model file. And this is sat on our Google Drive currently. I've put that there. You can save yours to your Google Drive as well. And just click on this folder and navigate back to your Google Drive and then find the model redhead.cktp file. If you are very neat with your structures, you could put it in your AI folder and in models. They should technically all live there, but I'm quite lazy with my hierarchy, shoot me. So if we press on the three dots here and go to copy path, and then we're gonna copy that path by pasting that in now. You don't need to touch anything else, that's good to go. We're gonna hit run 
on that cell and that's now going to load in our model. So once that has successfully run, you'll get this text down here saying using the train model, which is great. The next section is the start stable diffusion and this is the last section and then our UI will be ready. I am just going to leave it on model version stable diffusion 1.5 and I'm going to use the Gradio server. So I'm going to check this checkbox here and that's it. We just hit play on that cell and one word of warning is the cell will continue to run. This is going to be the engine for our UI. So do not close this browser down at all because that will stop your UI running. So this will consistently run so you will not get a green tick. What you will get down here when it's finished loading is a link to your local path or to the Gradio app where you're going to be running the UI from. This takes a few minutes to complete so go and grab a cup of tea and come back and it will be ready. Once it's complete, you'll be getting these two links. You can run it on your local URL or you can run it on a public URL. If you click on either link, I'm running it on the Gradio app, it will load up your UI. And you might have seen this UI when people are running it locally. It's pretty much the same. If you go to the top left hand corner, we can see our model we're using there is the redhead.ckpt that's loaded in nicely. If you're not using a model, it will have stable diffusion 1.5 or 2.1, whatever one you chose. So if we look down here, we're not going to be using the text to image. We're actually using the second tab along, which is the image to image. So click on that. And then here we've got where we're going to write our prompt. So what stylization do we want on our animation? First, I'm just going to load in the first frame of our animations. We're using our image split out into frames. So I'm just going to click on there. And I'm going to select the first frame of our animation, which is this one here. I'm going to write in my prompt. I've just written any old prompt in here, but one of the most important features here is that I've put painting of ZWX person. So it's that the ZWX is the trigger to my model to create the redhead character that I trained my model on. Without that, it won't give me such a consistent character. You can put whatever you want in the prompt, just if you're using a model, just remember the word that you trained it on in the instances way back in Dream Booth. So the negative means anything I don't want to see in the animation. So I've just put the usual blurry, blown out, dust, blood. You can put maxillism, whatever you want to put or whatever you don't want to see in the animation, pop it in here. It's going to be a negative. So don't put no, just put the words you don't want to see. So we've got our first frame. And if we just come down quickly and have a look at our parameters, so we've got the sampling steps. So that's how long it takes to render each frame and in how much quality you want in each frame and the detail. So the higher, the more detail and quality you'll get per frame, but the longer it will take for you to render that frame. So I like to go up to about 100 because I'm using a remote GPU and it can handle that. Let's go for 100. So the sampling message is how your image is decoded. I personally like EULA A. You can have a go yourself and just try different ones, but for this tutorial, I'm going to be using EULA A. The width and the height, so the width and the height of your output file. So my input file is 448 and I think it was 768, my memory serves me. So that's the size of my input and that will be the size of my output. So they're going to match, there's not going to be any distortion. Restore faces. So I'm going to check the restore face box. And if you come up here on your top tab, you can see settings and you click on that. And we can see in the middle here in the column face restoration. So you select a different facial restoration or load your own in. You can use a GFP GAN or code former or none at all. And you can control the weight of the facial restoration, zero being maximum effect one being a minimal effect. So sometimes the facial restorers can, especially on a train model, make them not look so much like the model anymore. So you just want to get a nice balance there. You can click on apply settings and then go back to your image to image tab. 
and we'll continue with the parameters. So the batch count is how many folders that you have in this batch. I'm going to just create one. You can create multiple, but for this, I'm just creating one. The CFG scale is how much you want the image or the output image to conform to the prompt. So the higher the number, the more it will conform to the prompt. The lower the number, the more creative results you will get. Denoising is another very important parameter. If you set it on zero, nothing is going to change. Your output will look like your input and we don't want that. So you want to have a nice medium. I think 0 0.5 is usually a nice medium for that. You can go a bit lower. If you go too high, I think it takes away from animation. I think a 0 0.5 is a nice balance here, but you can have a play around and see what you like. So it combines a little bit of the input and merges it with your model as well as your prompt. Now we come down to the seed. Minus one means it's going to create or re-roll us a new seed. If you've got a seed that you're using, you can put it in here, but it doesn't matter because we're just going to see if we can get an image we like. And once we get the image we like by generating the first frame, we will save that seed and reuse it using this button or copying and pasting it in here. So with all that done, we're just going to generate one frame and see if we like the results. Of this is the result of our parameters and our prompt, and it looks quite good. If you look down here, you can see the seed, but you can also press this button, which means reuse the seed, and it will pop your seed for that image down there. So if you hit generate again, it will just generate the same image, which we want for our animation. So what you can do is change your prompt or your parameters if you don't like that and set that back to minus one and regenerate a different image. What I'm going to do now is just load in another frame and just make sure that's consistent. So I'm going to click on another frame I mean this is not a very dynamic animation I'm sure yours will be a lot better and I'm going to click generate again and that's going to use the same seed hypothetically it should look the same as that and there it does it looks great so it looks very consistent from the first frame and then just pick a couple and just try it out so once you're happy with the overall output of your image if you just head over to batch image to image this is where we're going to set up the output and the input of our animation and we're just going to put the input directory which is the frames that we're inputting so if you go over to your fast stable diffusion tab over on your browser let's open up the google drive to get our input files i've already made a folder on my google drive with my frames in it so i'm just going to expand that and these are all my frames i'm going to press the three dots and copy path and come back to my stable diffusion and then just paste that path into the input directory so it knows where to look for those frames. Now, if you want to create an output folder, go back to my Google Drive and let's say I'm just going to put it in out and then click on the three dots, a copy path and then go back to your stable diffusion and paste that into your output folder. Super easy. And your settings are all carried across from your previous image to image. And all you need to do now is press generate. It will now save those frames into your Google Drive. So I just took my output files and imported them into After Effects and compiled everything together and removed the background. And this is what I got. And then the next test I did was a low resolution about lighting a video of my face just to see what the model looked like. And I guess when you guys come round to it, you would have a much better setup than I did. So you can see what is achievable in a few minutes worth of work. It's pretty cool. So my conclusion to this video is using my technique of using a model and then putting it through image to image and controlling it with prompt and specific parameters, you get a really nice animation. Now there are a few artifacts and I've got a way to get rid of them. You may have heard of this program called eBSynth, where you can simply run the first frame of your input which was this frame and then the first frame of your output which is this frame and run it through ebsynth you get rid of those artifacts in the animation now you can comp this all together in after effects and get a really really good outcome and i'd love to see what you guys create because you're going to do something way more creative than i have thank you so much for watching this video and yeah that will do it until next time goodbye